some of your drafts, getting groceries that I feel are pretty good to use on a low carb diet. Now, I usually recommend a low carb diet for my patients. I uh, personally follow a ketogenic diet most of the time. So about 30 grams of carbs a day. That, that doesn't mean that that works for everyone. And I certainly also have times when I switch it up and eat some carbs again. But um, for the most part, and I think all the experts, and it's, it's kind of funny to me that we as medical doctors suddenly are experts on this, <laughs> because we had about five lectures on nutrition and most evolved one to a food pyramid and that was it. But um, we can all agree on that uh, carbohydrate consumption and decreasing carbohydrates is beneficial to our health. So one of the things, when we look back, what has changed in our society that today we are sicker than we used to be about 100 years ago? You look back to early 1900s and um, the rates of, of cancer, heart disease and obesity were very low. They were around 1% maybe. And today they are 30%. That's a huge change, you know, and what contributed to that? And a lot of it has to do with diet and environmental toxins that we're exposed to. And um, I think all the, all the experts <laughs> can agree on that three things that we can do for better health is one to decrease our carbohydrates specifically the ones in you know refined flour and refined sugars those have to come down because increased carbohydrates certainly has lead to obesity insulin resistance and has been detrimental to our health number two decreasing those omega-6 fatty acids those polyunsaturated fatty acids those PUFAs and um, they call them vegetable oils or seed oils um, they're very artificial so we're talking about canola oil sunflower oil soybean oil uh, rapeseed oil these are horrible for us and they have done extensive studies uh, in rodents as well to show that when they're fed rodents diets rich in these um, poly uh, uh, sorry in, in these omega-6 fatty acids these artificial uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids they only had about half the life expectancy of a rat that was fed for example on a, on a butterfat diet they became sick they became obese they, they, they did it horrible so we know this rodents are not people sure but it's a good model for us to really follow a mammal through its life uh, through its whole life and see what happens to them so that's number two and unfortunately on everything and so when we look at packaging you'll see they're going to be in unfortunately in everything and we got to be very smart about weeding them out right and number three i think another thing that we can all agree on is that our plastics especially the chemicals in plastic things are horrible for us so we're talking about uh, phthalates and and bisphenols so when bpa is one everybody knows now they replaced it and now it's probably got bps or bpf in it just as bad it's just an advertising thing you know the industry said well we identified one thing that's bad we replace it with another and it's just as bad and you know and same goes for the phthalates so these are really major causes of infertility cancer heart disease autoimmune disorders plastics are terrible for us and we know that hard to avoid because you know what i mean food needs to be packaged in something but there are certain things we can do to avoid it and one thing i think that's very important to understand is that you know when we have a food that's on the fattier side like an oil specifically or, or liquid of any kind and it's in contact with these plastics a lot more of these plastics leak into the oil specifically when the food was heated or when we're heating it and that's really a bad thing to do we want to minimize our exposure to these plastics sometimes we can't avoid it meat is still packaged in the supermarket in plastics and we won't it's hard to find it any other way if you go to your local butcher you might get it in butcher's paper which is usually lined with wax and that's actually fine however uh, some of the newer butcher's papers are now lined with um, you know polypropylene or some some other uh, you know plastic and so that might not be as good anymore either so anyway so reducing these things i think is very important weeding out plastics decreasing those vegetable oils as much as we can and then also certainly you know decreasing our carbohydrate intake and that's something that we can all agree on nutritional experts they bicker back and forth they're like oh i recommend this diet and then oh this is bad for you and you should only eat like this again i think these are three basic things that we can all agree on and if i implement these with my patients i see them i see them lose weight become healthier and also their blood markers become better and that's a good uh, guide for me to see not only are they losing fat and they're looking a lot better but also are they becoming healthier? Because the insulin resistance goes down, the hemoglobin A1C comes down, their uh, cholesterol uh, markers improve. And these are all things that we can follow and you know, inflammatory markers. So we can look at this and see not only do they feel and look better, but also on, you know, when we do the lab work, um, you know, are they actually really getting better? And I think that's a good thing that we can do. Now, we'll also look at um, the vegetables. I usually try to get organic when I can. Of course, this is a bit more expensive, but even Ralph's, they will have an organic section for vegetables. Um, I always think it's better to get, you know, a little bit less of a good thing than eat a lot of a, of a bad thing. So let's see what we can find. 
So for people eating salami, I mean, that's usually fine because there's not much else in there. They don't put a lot of substitutes in there. There's not a lot of sugars in there. Carbs are almost zero. So these are always, that's a, a decent choice if you eat meat um, in moderation. So for my kids, it's a lot, a lot more difficult to get um, things that I'll eat. I'm gonna make them hot dogs. And these are just your standard beef hot dogs. Um, they don't do put too much other stuff in there, so that part is fine. However, it's not a um, generally good choice of meat. And the other thing is that, of course, they're wrapped in plastic, which is not ideal. But this is one of the compromises that when I, you know, get stuff that I know they'll eat, um, I probably have to make. So this is not an item that certainly isn't very healthy. But when you have to choose, you know, for the kids' hot dog buns, again, I kind of like this company, a Simple Truth. Um, I have nothing to do with them, but just want to show the differences. When you look at the ingredients here, it's, it's, it's fairly straightforward. There's not too much stuff in there that I would uh, object to. You know, um, palm oil, which is actually fine, you know, vinegar, wheat flour, and all these kind of things. A bit of soy lecithin, which I'm not crazy about. However, if you look at the normal, the cheap brand, let's see that they put stuff in there again. Like, where well, we have it right here, let me focus in a bit. Uh, soybean oil and that's something that I really don't want in any of the foods I'm eating and they put it in even here soybean oil is actually one of the ingredients in here so for peanut butter there's a crazy amount of selection of course but the main thing again is uh, what I don't like is first of all all of these are in plastic which I would not buy again this is an oily substance that should really be only in glass so this brand here this is glass um, and then when you see the list of ingredients here, if this comes into focus, here we go. They already only have peanuts and salt, and that's a good brand, so definitely gonna get that. When you look at, um, let's take another one, look at this one here for comparison. First of all, it's in a plastic jar, and again, you have leaking all these phthalates and um, BPA, BPF, BPS, whatever they put in there, in there. But then when you read here, the ingredients is roasted peanuts, sugar, and then we have 2% of molasses and hydrogenated vegetable oils, rapeseed and soybean. So those are two of the oils that I would not eat. You see that right here? These are very terrible for you. Yet it's in there to make it that the oil doesn't rise to the top. And on some of these, the oil will be on the top. Um, but that's fine. You know, you can mix it in as you, as you use it. So definitely always glass and the only ingredients in there should be peanuts and maybe salt. Olives are always great and you know, generally in a, in a glass, not much added to them usually. And in terms of carbohydrates, it's really less than one gram. So that's really fine. So I'm gonna get actually one of, one of these here. Then there was in a, in a glass that should be fine. Now, with pickles, gotta be a bit careful because a lot of times um, they put a lot of sugars in these. So we're looking around these here and when you see, on the ingredients. So total carbs, six grams, and here total sugars, five grams. So they add a lot of sugars into these. And that is something that, you know, would really try and, uh, to avoid. Let's see, we got here the very spicy ones, and still, when you look at here, six grams of sugar added, and I think that's really not necessary. Um, getting pickles without the added sugar is actually um, also a very, very good thing to have around the house. Now, sometimes when it says sugar-free, they do put sweetener, which is also something I think we don't necessarily need. But if you see on the label here, you, let's see here, um, where is it? Yeah, this one actually, gum, ascorbic acid, sucralose, there you go. So again, I mean, I am not big on sweeteners in general. If the one that I kind of like is allulose, but I don't think it's necessary in pickles. So. Always look at what's in it, and if you know you can't find them sugar free again, here's seven grams of sugar, that's a lot, but you can get pickles without sugar. And probably going to go with some that are just naturally sugar free. So, with mayonnaise, it's actually quite misleading. Um, the canola oil is, of course, not very good. I would not get this at all. This is very toxic. Here, this sounds all good, it sounds olive oil mayo, but when you read the label and you see what's actually in it what's the first ingredient after water, soybean oil, and then olive oil. So, you know, it is very misleading advertising. I mean, I would not get this. Plus it's wrapped in plastic. And again, there's an oil that's not good. 
Um, same goes for the salad dressings. They're usually made with cheap oils, like uh, soybean oil, or in this case here, uh, vegetable oil, soybean and canola, and then in a plastic bottle, and it's just terrible. Um, this one here is an avocado oil mayonnaise, and then um, reading the ingredients here, this sounds actually pretty good. You have avocado oil, free-range eggs, water, distilled vinegar, salt, lime juice. Perfect, that sounds good. Of course, very expensive, but again, I'd rather eat a bit less of this than using any of those. And again, uh, nothing certainly in a uh, plastic jar. So this one is actually a pretty good one. When it comes to dressings, um, I like this company here, Primal Kitchen. Because first of all, it's in a glass bottle. It says avocado oil, so we know they're using a good oil. And then when you look at the ingredients, actually that's the first ingredient, is avocado oil. And there's no other oil in there. I mean, you know, there are a lot of spices and whatnot. So in general, I think these are, uh, this is a pretty good brand. Again, it's more expensive. You see here, seven forty nine. If you get a comparable one, five forty nine, three sixty nine. But then again, and I like this brand too. This is glass. Let's see what this one's all about. Plant based. So I like that it's in a glass. But first ingredient, canola oil. No, no good. So anyway, so when it comes to these things, I think then it's better to invest a bit more and um, get it a glass bottle and without all the toxic oils. So for tomato sauce, it's very important always to get it in a glass. Um, tomato sauce is quite acidic. And if you put it in a can, um, you know, the can is lined with plastic. You're gonna have a lot more stuff leaking in there. So I found two that I like. The Primal Kitchen, which is very expensive, and then the Simple Truth. And um, the Simple Truth is a lot cheaper and looks actually very good. So this one here is made with um, tomato, 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 onion, and extra virgin olive oil. That's perfect. Excellent oil. And then just a bunch of spices here and all that. So this is an excellent one. Here, this is made with avocado oil. Um, for tomato sauce, I think um, olive oil is actually a very good choice and it's significantly cheaper. So this will be a good one. Let's see another one here. Also from Simple Truth. And let's see here. Yep, organic olive oil and no other oil. So it's always good to read the label because sometimes they say olive oil, fine, it's one of the ingredients and then there's other oils in there which you don't want. So this one's absolutely fine. Um, carbohydrate wise, you don't want to use too much of these because tomatoes do have more carbohydrates. You see here 11 grams per half a cup. So that's actually quite a bit. So if you are actually ketogenic, I would just use it sparingly. Um, but in general, this is actually a good thing to buy. Espresso, coffee, all these things I usually buy on the cheaper side. You know, these are I think all of these are lined on the inside, the cans as well, with some sort of plastic, so it doesn't really make a big difference. You can't really go on with espresso much. So here's flax seeds, which are sometimes used in cereals and all that. And you know, it's just pretty much fiber at this point, it's ground. It's got three grams of carbohydrates, which is three grams of dietary fiber. Um, fiber is overrated in terms of thinking it will help with constipation. It does not. All the studies have shown that that doesn't do anything. However, this is actually good to mix in some, some cereals. You want to thicken them up. And it does have a few um, healthy properties. There's some healthy oils in there and some other elements that, that, I, that I like. So it's not a bad thing to have. They're, all with, they're packed in plastic, but here, when you have something that's, a, you know, a sort of a powdery form, it doesn't have that much contact with it. So the amount of plastics leaking in here is probably not too bad. So it's not a liquid, it's not particularly fatty. So this is probably okay. So when it comes to pancakes, that's something that my kids will eat. Um, a slightly healthier choice than all these down here. And when you look at this brand here, you look at the ingredients, it's not, not the best. Because you're gonna see here um, a lot of sugar and then corn syrup, kind of all these things that you don't necessarily want in there. And soybean oil is the last ingredient listed there, which is certainly something I don't wanna buy. Now the Kodiak brand is actually pretty good. We saw an advertising and then on TV. And my kids are, they like these. They have a higher protein content. So these are 14 grams of protein per serving. Um, ingredient wise, this looks pretty good to me. Um, whole grain flour, oat flour, whey protein, that's fine. Wheat protein, a little bit of brown sugar. Um, so these are actually pretty good. And then what we'll do, um, of course, this is all sugar. Syrups are all sugar, but. Simple Truth makes a allulose syrup, and that's actually a very good one. 
So when we flip this one over to see what's in it, um, allulose is actually sugar that doesn't get absorbed. While it has, says total carbs 22 grams, that's carbohydrates that go straight through you without being absorbed. It's interesting about allulose is that allulose, again, it doesn't enter your system. So it tastes sweet, almost like sugar, not quite, but almost, but you don't absorb it. So it doesn't really spike your insulin. And there's been some studies shown that it actually can stabilize uh, insulin levels. So not only does it not spike the insulin terribly, it can stabilize it. So this is a probably good choice uh, to put on the pancakes to decrease their sugar consumption. So in terms of cooking oils down here, all these ones I would stay away from. It says vegetable oil, that's bad. Those are all these seed oils, polyunsaturated fatty acids, vegetable oil, that's dirt cheap. Crisco, I didn't even know that was still legal. Anyway, um, these are all bad. Uh, now, avocado oil is great, um, but here as well, some of it, this is a plastic bottle, we'll never buy that. Remember plastic leeches, a lot of the phthalates and um, BPA, BPC, BPF in there, so we don't really want that. So glass bottles are good. And for example, this is a super brand. You always have to check that actually what's in it is pure avocado oil. So when we read the ingredients here, just one ingredient, this looks good to me. It is more expensive, of course, but you may not need as much of it actually. So this one's $15.99. Um, yeah, similar to this one, but this one's in a plastic bottle. So when it comes to cereals, I pretty much would avoid them altogether. So just to show you why, all of the cereals are very high in things like, you know, of course, sugar. There's tons of them in there. And then you have canola, soybean oil, corn syrup. So all these kind of things that you don't really want to have. Um, so unfortunately, all of them will have that. Even the ones that might say they're a bit healthier than others when you read the ingredients in there. This one here is not too bad, but again, canola oil in there, a lot of sugar, molasses. So they put these uh, seed oils in all of these cereals because it's very cheap. So in general, for my kids, I'm trying not to buy this stuff anymore because it doesn't, you know, it's not very healthy for them. Even the, what you think is the healthy ones, let's say the kashi. Let's see here, in terms of the ingredients in here. Um, soy flakes, not big on soy, I mean, it's very estrogenic, so you don't want to have too much of that soy protein. Kind of don't want to give that to kids too much. Brown rice, canola oil, so even these are not, they sound healthier, but they really are not, so I would just avoid them. So nuts usually are, are good, especially on keto and low carb. The problem is even here, when you look at the label, unfortunately, they put vegetable oil in there. Uh, peanut, cotton seed, soybean, sunflower, and all that stuff we should not eat. So always got to read the label. There are some that don't have that in them, but the ones that do, I would kind of uh, stay away from. So for meat, that's what I mentioned earlier. That's one of the products that always will be packaged, unfortunately, in plastic. Can't avoid it. Um, this one here is um, organic. So grass-fed beef, 15% um, fat. The fat content really, I mean, can be high. That doesn't make a huge difference. I wouldn't get too much of my fat from, from meat. And also you don't need to eat too much meat anyway. I mean, it's, I would say honestly for me per week, um, my kids hardly eat this. Maybe for me, one pound, maybe one and a half. We don't eat a lot of it. But um, again, uh, meat can be good. It's, it's grass fed, it's actually not bad. The problem is always packing it in this plastic. That's an issue. And then butter, um, there's different types, you know, should be, Ideally, the organic should be really from grass-fed uh, cows if you can. Not sure if this one is, says organic, but it doesn't always mean what it's supposed to mean. And then you also always have um, Kerrygold, which is more expensive. But with butter, you can't really go wrong. If you want to spend extra money, you can get ghee, which is clarified butter. Um, but I think these are two very good choices. Also not cheap, organic, you know. This was about 750, and this one here is, uh, it's, it's a lot less, but it's like 550, so that's a lot of money. But Again, uh, it's, a, it's a good fat, and um, it's something that you don't have to use a whole lot of, but you know, it's good to have it around. So this is a bit of a compromise, because my kids, they um, eat these chicken nuggets. It's really hard to find healthy things for them. Not the end of the world, I mean, it's supposedly made from chicken breast meat, I'm sure it's uh, more the rest of it. Um, and when you read it here, it doesn't sound too bad. So you get, you know, boneless chicken, um, some wheat flour, corn flour, which I'm not crazy about. The only problem I see here is canola oil right there, as you see. So they, they, they do make some canola oil there, which I'm not too thrilled about. 
uh, and soy protein. But again, they're very small amounts, two uh, percent or less. So while it's not ideal, it um, is something that they'll eat. And if you make this with some avocado oil or butter in the pan, it is not the worst <laughs> in the world. So this is really a compromise, and it's just for the kids. I wouldn't necessarily eat it, but man, they gotta be, you know, they're picky. So for milk, unfortunately, most of it is in plastic bottles. This brand here, this brand here is in glass and it's more expensive, but it might be a good idea to get milk in a glass bottle, easy to recycle and um, spend more on it. But that's for my kids, they drink that. I don't drink milk, but you know, I'm gonna get a few of those. So heavy whipping cream is um, very good do low carb or keto, you can use it for many things. It doesn't have any sugar. This one's supposed to be organic. Um, the issue is it's packaged in a like a tetra pack, which is lined with plastic, of course, which is not good. And then you have some of this gel and gum. Why did I put it in there? I don't know. But again, when you look at the carb content, less than one gram, so it's very little. And that's just uh, the remnants probably of lactose that are in there. So this is actually a pretty good thing to use when you want to mix it in some, you know. Uh, spaghetti sauce, it's good. You can do some desserts with this without putting sugar in it. It's actually very good to have. So potato chips, tortilla chips, unfortunately, here I can't even find them. They have all, unfortunately, oils in them. So when you look at this randomly here, potatoes, vegetable oil, canola, corn oil, soybean oil, sunflower oil, that's really poison in the, in the bag. And then sometimes they make it with avocado oil, but I don't find it here. So this is the only one I found here that doesn't have canola oil in it. This is actually uh, made with coconut oil. <laughs> I don't know if it tastes good, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this one out. So this is Greek yogurt. Um, it's actually a pretty good brand, and I think that's great uh, to have around. Only five grams of carbs, a lot of protein. The problem is, of course, um, it's in a plastic container with a plastic thing on top. I mean. Again, it's cooled and uh, things that are refrigerated, the leakage of these um, phthalates and the BPA, BPB, BPC, whatever they have in there, is not as bad. Um, but again, the bisphenols and the phthalates still leak in there. So not ideal. Wish they had them in glass. So I ran out of battery at the grocery store. Um, so I want to switch the camera around and show you the rest of my extremely eclectic shopping. So we looked earlier at the peanuts and saw that, you know, the peanuts in the can were made with a lot of oil, um, vegetable oil they put in there. So technically a fairly relative inert, healthy food and they put oil in there. Now here, these ones I found, they do not have that. And when we look at the uh, label here, we see all the ingredients are is uh, inchow, roasted peanuts and salt. And they're probably dry roasted as far as I understand this concept. And that's fine. So they don't really put, except for salt, anything in it. A bit more work, a lot of dirt. Um, yeah, you gotta be sweeping the floor after that, but better than adding those um, vegetables in there. Cheese wise, so that was a tricky one. Now we have the, um, they're packaged in plastic and unfortunately that's just how they come. Um, not sliced might be better because you have less contact with the surface here, but it's still not good. Baby Bell, now they're packaged on the inside in wax that should be good. I'm gonna do a bit more research on that, what's in that wax, but wax is fairly inert and it's fine to use. Uh, taking things to it. This is totally random as you as you can tell, but these items I think are worth having around if you take food uh, like me to work usually I Recycle I take uh, glass or stainless steel But if I'm completely out paper is probably fine not the one that's coated because when it's coated It's coated with a film of plastic. So you want to avoid that and then we looked earlier at the um, uh, Pickles and I found these ones these ones have neither sweetener nor sugar so when we hold these up here we can see Less than one gram of carbohydrates and ingredients, just cucumber, water, vinegar, sea salt, and then a couple of preservatives, but they're not too bad. And that's it. So they do exist. It's one of an, it's an easy way to do. Now, this is certainly not low carb, but for my kids, you know, once in a while, bananas are fine. If you're on a ketogenic low carb diet, of course, these are have a lot of sugar. You shouldn't eat those. Um, I just, as a sample, I put a few on, of those out. I like these Persian cucumbers. They're good snacks also. Uh, kids will eat them, those are fine. Um, they have very little carbohydrates. The sweet peppers, on the other hand, do have some sugar, so you gotta eat them in moderation. Again, great, great for snacks for kids. So all of these make actually excellent snacks, you know. And then blueberries. Blueberries have a low glycemic uh, index as to raspberries. So if you are on a ketogenic diet or on a very low carbohydrate diet, this is the fruit that I still like. 
um, in, in moderation because a lot of antioxidants and very, very low glycemic index, which is great. So these are actually fine. These ones, and again, the raspberries are very good choices. So again, very eclectic shopping. Certainly not all the items uh, we've seen today are compatible with the ketogenic or low carb diet, but it was just an example shopping for a family where you have different needs, you know, one ketogenic person, one low carb person, and then kids that will probably prefer to eat crap all day long unless we intervene and, you know, making some choices that and some compromises that they, you know, that they'll still eat, but make it a bit healthier and weed out the bad things like the oils and all that that we discussed. All right. Thank you so much. Bye.